With transitions, you can change the way your content gets on and off the screen. Not only can you do this globally to all of ProPresenter, but you can do this to specific documents, to individual slides, or to each element on a slide to create the most dynamic and engaging presentations. First, we'll look at how to set global transitions. So this applies to every document, every song, every item. This is a global transition throughout the program. So if I play back a video and hit some slide content here, you'll see that it plays back. And down here are our transitions for those two layers. So this is the transition for our video and image layer, and this is the transition for our slide layer. So if I would switch this to push, this will switch the global transition. So now this will push text on, but even if I switch to a different document, it's going to continue to push the text because that's the global transition. The same is true as if I switch out my, you know, my background transition maybe to this flip. As soon as I click on this, it's going to flip our video and image. So that's the global transition. No matter what document I'm inside of, it's going to respect that transition. We can also set global transition for other layers like our props layer by going to view, going down to props, and you'll see we have a transition button here, and we can set a transition for all of our props layer by setting the transition right there. Now let's take a closer look at all of these transitions. So we're gonna go to our announcement loop here and we'll look at our transitions through these slides. Now not only can we set global transitions, we also can set transitions for each document. So if you look at our document information here, there's a transition icon here for this document. So I can go in and I can set different transitions just for this one particular document. I'm gonna set my transitions globally back to a dissolve so we can see the difference between what we're doing. So now that these are set back, I'm gonna start my loop and you'll see that it's doing our global transition of a fade and that's because this is set to the default. So it's going to respect and utilize the global transition. But if I switch this to a cut, this will take precedent over our global transition and it will use our document transition. So I can start using some different ones here. So we've already seen a dissolve, uh, a fade through black. So it's gonna fade uh, through black for our transition. We have that flip transition we looked at, which is the first of a few different 3D transitions. We have a swap transition, cube, and a door transition for our 3D transitions. And then we have a, an iris transition that we can utilize, and we have a ripple effect that are both uh, kind of similar. And then we get into our push transition. Now the thing you'll notice about the push transition is it has another option besides the duration. It also has a direction feature, so we can switch what direction this is going in. And our wipe transition has similar directions. It also has some angular directions, so it can start in a corner and go across. And uh, we'll set, set this back so we can look at our cover transition. And this is going to uh, cover up the current content as it animates on or transitions on. And then we have a reveal transition that does the opposite. So it's going to kind of reveal what's beneath it. And then we have some 3D transitions that fly in or zoom in. Now these transitions uh, have an extra option of motion extended. So I've set this to center, but I'm gonna check this motion extended box and then we can say what speed is the motion extended gonna be. Basically, after the content makes it onto the screen, it's gonna continue the motion after it's entered. So if we do a zoom in, you'll see that when it zooms in this next one, it's gonna continue moving towards us. So it'll continue moving closer and closer towards us. So that's what the motion extended does. And we can change the speed of that motion extended. Now for this document, I'm just gonna set this to a push and maybe we'll set this to you know a push up. So everything's just gonna keep moving up and up and up. So when I click on this, you know, it'll move up and then the next slide will move up again. So we've seen global transitions and document transitions, but we can also apply per slide transition. So I'm gonna right click on the slide and go to transitions. And this will allow me to apply a transition to just this one particular slide. So I'm gonna set a push transition and our document transition is already set to a push, but it's uh, pushing up. So this one I'm gonna set to go over. And then maybe over here we'll do one other one, we'll do a transition and we'll do a push and we'll have this go a different direction. So we'll have it go you know, backwards. 
So now I'll click on this slide. It's going to do our document transition, but then this one is going to do its slide transition. Then we'll go back and we'll do a document transition for a couple more so it'll keep sliding up. And then when we get down here, it's going to follow its slide transition again. So it's going to do that transition differently than all the other slides. So you can see how you can uh, change the transitions per slide, per document, and globally. Finally, we can get even more narrow and focused and we can set a per element transition. So we can animate or transition every single element on our slide on individually. And to show this off, I'm going to use our props layer. So we're going to go up to view and down to props. And you'll notice that I've previously created a prop. I'll edit this and you'll see that this is a lower third title for the host. So it's me, the tutorial host. And we have a couple different items here, a couple different text boxes, as well as a shape that I just created and colored. So now we'll go to our slide build properties here. And with this selected, I can apply a transition to this one element. So I'll apply a push and we'll set the direction to this uh, to up from the bottom. So it's gonna come up from the bottom and we'll do a one second duration. Now we can do other transitions to our other uh, text boxes. So I'll set this to a push and we'll set this uh, from the bottom as well. And maybe we want this to be a little bit longer so it'll be 1.5 seconds. And then our last one, we'll do a transition we'll do a push and we'll have this one come up from the bottom and 1.5 seconds here as well. So now these are all gonna come from the bottom, but I want them to stagger how they come on. So this first one is set to start with the slide, but the second one I want to start after a delay of like, let's say 0.5 seconds. And then the last one I want to do a delay of like 0.8 seconds. So now we have different transitions for each item here. And when I hit show, you'll see that our bottom comes up and then our text comes up right after it. So we could mess around and change the different settings, but you can see how you can easily apply a transition to each element on a slide.